didn't try the Chinese water torture. I think that would work. How about bamboo shoots up our fingernails? I tell you what, they can crucify us, Joe. We're not going to talk. Don't worry about that right now. Tell me about Robert. Well, he took a charter flight back. Yeah, yeah, but did you get a chance to see him or talk to him? Only for a second. He said South Africa was a dead end. Springbok? A ghost town. He came back knowing little more than what he left with. <sighs> Great. Meanwhile, what are we supposed to do? Oh, don't worry about it. I'll be able to get you out of here with very little trouble. I'm just kind of worried about Luke and Holly right now. Everything we do, nothing helped. I tell you what, if it'll help, I'll stay in jail and start a hunger strike. Yeah. No, there are more effective ways of protest. Well, at least we know Robert got the message from Benny. Oh, that's right. You, you don't know anything about that, do Maybe you? Maybe I shouldn't know. Well, there's not a lot we can tell you. Yeah, it's just that, that Luke called Benny with a message for Robert. Well, don't tell me the message. Oh, we can't. Uh, he wouldn't tell us either. Yeah, he said that he would only uh, tell Robert. So that means that Robert's probably over at Benny's right about now. Probably there and gone is more like it. Well, there's a ray of hope in that. Well, too bad his other three rays of hope are sitting here in jail. If only we knew what Luke and Holly were up against. <laughs> Right, they're not in there. It's got to be around here somewhere. Yes, well, we'd better keep looking. Let's check and see if the men have spotted them. The best place is still inside the theater. No sign of Scorpio. Beautiful afternoon, isn't it, Stella? Uh, is that Alan's car I saw in the driveway? Yes, it is. He and Mrs. Quartermain have the afternoon off. Oh, how lovely. Where mm. are they? In the living room. Oh, I just, I'll just i just drop by and, and say hello to them. Uh, Mrs. Quartermain, I'd better warn you. Uh, Mr. Baldwin's been here. They've had very bad news. Oh? We could sell the house? Sell the house. That's your answer to everything now. I'm just tossing out ideas. Well, toss it back in again, Monica. I've got two weeks to find an answer still. I've got it. We will have an Allen and Quartermain $100 day. We will have games, booze, and everything will cost $100. Now, hang on to that one. I might consider it in the future. Hello, my dear. Hello. Hello, Mother. I've been told this bad news. Oh. You won't believe it. I've got... Mother. You are my solution. Me, dear? What could I possibly do? Lee has informed Alan that he has to give Jason Moore a million dollars. Payable almost immediately. Oh, not that nasty business all over again. I don't have the money, Mother. Uh, well, I should say not, dear. I mean, after all, a million dollars is hardly what, something that one tucks under the mattress. Well, Lee has uh, told Alan he could be in very big trouble if he doesn't find the million dollars. Uh, how big a trouble? Oh, big I'm enough to sure. go to jail. Jail? Oh, dear, how nasty. A quarter man in jail? Oh, Edward wouldn't like that at all. I know he wouldn't like it, Mother. He wouldn't like it at all. I wouldn't like it either. Which is why I have to ask you, my dear. Can you lend me the money? I will pay it back to you. I will pay it back to you with interest. Oh, that's not necessary, dear. It's not necessary? Oh, my God, Mother. Uh, oh, thank you. I knew you would be... Dear, dear, you, you didn't let me finish. I mean, I would give you the money if I could. You know that. I'd love to, but I just don't have it myself. Well, Lila, even with your controlling interest in ELQ? Well, I suppose my assets run to well over a million dollars, but unfortunately, it's not cash. You see, dear, I'm what is known as cash poor. Well, you're not alone. The whole country is. You must have something tucked away, Mother. I wish I could say I did, dear, but uh, my investment is uh, in, in Corso Oil has everything tied up. And that gets worse and worse every day. $750,000 down the drain. 
Wait. Wait a minute. That gives me an idea. Um, several weeks ago, Edward asked Basil Corso for his money back. And Mr. Corso was quite congenial about it, and he offered to write a check on the spot. Well, why didn't Edward take him up on it? Oh, well, dear, you know him. He changed his mind again. He, he decided that the delays or not, it was still a good investment. Which is exactly why he would never allow us to withdraw the money for any other purpose. Well, listen, he might, Alan, if he understood the circumstances. What? That I need a million dollars for my illegitimate son? Monica, please, use your head. Which is precisely what you should have done before you fathered that child, Don't Alan. start in my now, Children, Mon children, children, do stop bickering. I mean, we have a serious problem to solve that needs an entirely united front. So the Corso money is out, right? Well, I'm afraid so. Even Mr. James, my private banker, told me that he thought it was a good investment. Well, whatever. It sure sticks me straight back in the poorhouse where I started. Uh, perhaps not. What, you have another idea? Well, a variation on the last one, dear. Uh, what if I borrowed the $750,000 from the Corsos with the stipulation that I paid it back with interest? How can you do that? I mean, how would you be able to pay it back? Well, Edward and I have a little deal going that comes due in several months, and I'm sure the Corsos wouldn't mind waiting. Especially with a healthy interest as incentive? Well, I think that's an excellent idea. Well, are you going to make up the $250,000? I think I could get my hands on the two hundred and fifty without too much trouble. How soon can you get your hands on the other part of the money, Mother? Um, well, dear, I tell you what. Why don't I go over and visit the Corsos this very afternoon? They were such lovely men, and it would be delightful to see them again. Probably the day that you met me was the worst day in your life. No, actually, the worst day in my life was a little earlier than that. It was, uh, I think it was about 1964. It was late in summer. I think it was a Thursday afternoon. What happened is I had a, an appointment at the dentist's office. I had three impacted wisdom tooth, terrible pain, and I went there, and he had no pain medication whatsoever. Cold turkey, he pulled those suckers out of my face. That was the worst day of my life. This is grim, but that was a bad day. Come on, smile. Hold on, Scorpio will be here. Do you really think he's coming? Hey, baby. I stake my life on it. Let's get up there, out of sight. Come on. so long. Well, if I had a number I could call to find out, I would. Well, they've been going too long. Something has to have gone wrong. 
We would have heard. Just relax. Relax? Relax, you say? How can I relax? This whole poor Charles thing has gone too far. Look, let me remind you. If it hadn't been for the careless of your daughter, we wouldn't be in this situation. But you're beginning to sound like Basil. Basil might be a little harsh, but he was right about one thing. Your daughter is not cut out for this business, and neither are you. Look, Reginald, I've done everything I could for you and the family. But it's obviously not enough. Well, then get somebody else. It's too late for that. It should be all over in a few hours. As you hope. I shudder to think what would happen to you and Holly if you were left here in Port Charles after you were exposed. The last thing I need right now are your threats. <laughs> Just relax. There's nothing more we can do. We could declare a religious preference and pray. <sighs> I've never gone on my knees for man or God. Well, now might be the time to reconsider. Another visitor. Stay calm. I'll get it. I'm sorry. We gave it the office. Oh, no, Reginald. It, it's Mrs. Quarterman. Lila, uh, come in, please. <laughs> You know, I haven't solicited donations door to door in quite some time. Yes, uh, this is my cousin, Reginald Corso. I do hope you'll forgive me for my blunder, Mrs. Quartermain. Oh, it was a most understandable mistake, Mr. Corso. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. There we are. Uh, <clears throat> you I see. Um, have I come at a bad time? What would make you say that? Well, you both seem a trifle <laughs> nervous. I hope there's nothing wrong. See, Charles and I were waiting on a, uh, the result of a foreign oil deal that uh, we've been going on for some time. Oh, yes, I know very well how exasperating that can be. <laughs> well, it'll be all over soon. Uh, is uh, this visit of a social nature, Mrs. Quarterman? No, no, it's business. Do you mind if I come straight to the point? No, go right ahead. Well, it's very simple, really. I'd like to borrow back the money that I invested in Corso Oil. The, the whole amount? Uh, yes, the entire $750,000 worth. Uh, you're not serious? <laughs> yes, I'm afraid I am. You see, a family crisis has arisen. Well, that is unfortunate, but... Uh, uh, we'd be happy to write you a check, Mrs. Quarterman. Immediately? <laughs> well, if we could, you see... Basil is our uh, treasurer, and he must have his signature on every check. Oh, he's not in? I'm afraid not. Oh, well, then I'll wait. That's all right with you. <laughs> uh, I have nothing planned this afternoon. You don't understand. He's out of town. Oh, dear. This is very unfortunate. Uh, you couldn't wait a couple of days, could you? Well, I'd hoped to get everything in motion long before that, but it seems that I have no choice. Unless... Uh, yes? Um... Sean Valley at the back. He's an old family friend, and I'm sure I could get him to okay the transaction without involving Basil. Oh, uh, let me call him. Uh, uh, Mrs. Quartermain, I, I don't think that... Oh, it's no trouble at all. Uh, 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 oh, dear, uh, what's the matter? Charles, are you all right? I know it's all the excitement. Oh, what can I do? Uh, it's, it's all right. Uh, my, my pills, <laughs> Reginald, oh, please. Um... I think we should call a doctor. Uh, no, 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 no. It'll, it'll pass. It just... Oh, thank you. It's, uh, I've been working and worrying too much lately. And, and as we're building up... Why don't we, uh, hold off calling Mr. Valley? Charles is in no condition to go through this. Oh, I understand perfectly. Edward, uh, he's my husband. He often works himself up into these states. Uh, no, we'll wait until Basil returns. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Miss Porter. Well, we'll be in touch oh, in a yes. couple of days. Right. Uh, no, please don't get up. Oh, don't get up. I can find my own way to the door. And, uh, Charles, you'll take care of yourself now. Yes, I, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Yes, I guess it was. I think uh, Basil even would have been impressed. Don't you?
one life to live. What if you had another choice? Between what and what? Between an acting career and settling down with a nice fellow. Is this a proposal? Well, if it was, would you accept? And on the edge of night... You have to at least stay for a nightcap. Baby, do you really think that I owe you something? Mr. Whitney, you are no gentleman. But a man is not required to be a gentleman, except in the presence of a lady. One Life to Live, The Edge of Night, weekdays.